Hey everybody and welcome back to another segment of Yellow Card Vanguard Cram School. With an influx of new players for Vanguard Overdress, players might be interested into exploring other formats such as VN Premium. Now, one of the less intuitive strategies in those formats that's not as prevalent in Overdress is the concept of damage denial. So, I've made this Yellow Card Cram School video to explain the what, how, and why of damage denial. So because this is a concept that most veteran players do know of, but more newer players coming into the more advanced formats will not be aware of, I've chosen to do this more of a lecture style, something you'd expect to see almost in a university class, maybe high school class. Uh, it's going to be a PowerPoint presentation and basically examples, but mostly I'll be doing most of the speaking. What is damage denial? Damage denial is a conscious decision to play outside of the normal line of play to prevent your opponent from getting open counterblast. In essence, this is a play to deny resources from your opponent, especially when your opponent's game plan needs open counterblast and that's incredibly essential to them. It is in your best interest to damage deny as much as possible when the opportunity presents itself. For example, if your opponent's strategy is incredibly reliant on open counterblast, definitely do consider denying their damage. Next, how do we deny damage? There's a few ways, but I'll list the three most common ones you might see. Uh, the most obvious one is to ride and pass, which basically means you don't swing with your vanguard. In subtext here, I said that this is a minus one to yourself, two minus one to your opponent. So a drive check is essentially a plus one, a way to replace the card that you rode into. However, giving them that open counter blast can lead to them having a plus one of higher selectivity. That's why I say if you were to choose to minus one yourself, if you chose to neg yourself this one low quality card, you could potentially be negging one of your opponent's higher quality choices. This kind of strategy is best when you have grade 1s that you can ride into, even grade 2s maybe, that don't need counterblast or to swing to refund themselves. Two examples I have here is Chrono Tooth Tigar and Morbidus. Both of them basically say, without swinging, they do draw a card back. Chrono Fang Tigar on your next ride phase, and Morbidus on your next ride phase when you ride up over her. Another strategy to deny damage is to swing at rearguards. If your opponent plays aggressive early and they call down rearguards to attack in hopes that you will match their aggression and also hit their vanguard in the face, they will get counter blast back to call out more cards to keep up their aggression but also to further their game plan. Simply put, at this point, what you can do is just swing at their rearguards. This will get you the plus one from drive checking without having to risk giving them counter blast to play with. For example, a deck that can recuperate board easily via the use of counter blast would be Orphus, I guess. You know that for two counter blasts, they can rebuild their board three shadow tokens. Let's say that the Orphus player has one open counter blast and they decided to aggress you on their grade 2 turn. Proper line of play at this point would be to call another rearguard to swing at one of their rearguards and to have your vanguard swing at one of their rearguards. This gets you the drive check from your vanguard but also clears their board, minuses their tempo, and now they don't have the counter blast to recuperate the hand they use to aggress you. The third way is that you could swing under. You mostly see this kind of method used in premium, V premium, where the entire card pool of Vanguard is used. This allows for older cards with lower base powers but with desirable effects to be in your deck. By running units with lower base power, you can attack your opponent's Vanguard at minimum 1 to pass, allowing you to get your drive check without having to give your opponent a counter blast. Now obviously, there's a risk that you might get a trigger regardless, in which case it's a good idea to call another unit down that you can give trigger power to if you were aiming to deny damage. In the most unrealistic example, we can compare the powers of a V era grade 1 ride such as Nakir and a G era unit such as Laurel at 4k. God forbid you had to ride him, but for example, you could ride him to 4k, call another unit in the back row, and you know for a fact that regardless what kind of trigger you got, bar the over trigger, you would be able to hit them without fear of giving them counter blast. So now that we know how to damage deny, we need to ask ourselves, why would we want to damage deny? If there's one thing from this video I want new players to take away from this video, they're going into the legacy formats V and premium, 
it's to ask themselves this question. How far can they go with one counterblast? You will mostly find in V and in premium, one counterblast will go a really long way. One of the examples I wanted to use was in a previous one, with one counterblast, Grand Blue could get a really high quality plus one. So coming back to the miss coming back to the first example of denying yourself the plus one from drive checking to give your opponent a minus one. Let's say that you did do your drive check here. You got a card, just a random card off the top. Statistically, this is a low quality card because there is a card that you're looking for in your deck, a combo piece, but you're not really searching for it. You're just trying to drip it off the top. So you got a low quality plus one and with their counter blast one they have now, they can ride Coulombard, use his skill to mill out the Night Rose, use Greed Shade from hand to now have the Night Rose in hand to guarantee their next grade three ride. This, with their one counter blast, got a really high quality plus one. In another example, that counter blast could become a cheap plus two that speeds up the pace of the game incredibly. Let's say we're against Kagero. One counter blast for them is near infinite value. Their Conro can convert into a Zazan, which converts into Cyclone, which then converts into a really strong Soen board that can just get you in for game without you having a chance to play. All for that one plus one drive check that you wanted so badly. The last example of how much they can go with one counter blast is literally infinite. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, Zistro has put out the video for the Visible Songster loop. For a low amount of counter blasts, you can basically loop infinite number of tags, basically pushing them from zero to game via the use of just one counter blast and having the ability to recycle counter charge via tier and Zarzan. However, let's say that there's a deck that does whatever they want without counter blast, and any counter blast they use is for low quality card conversion, such as counter blast draw one. I would not choose to damage deny in this case as they don't really progress their game state heavily with that one counter blast, and each damage I cheese in early game is a damage I don't have to deal with in late game when both players have farmed their hands up. That's pretty much all I had in mind for this segment of Yellow Card Cram School. I wanted to help introduce the new player base into the legacy formats and basically let them know of the strategy known as damage deny. Uh, if you found this helpful, definitely let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. This has been Toku from Yellow Card Vanguard. Toku out.